What I do most in front of my desk is make videos, game, and watch videos. The least expensive thing on my setup is this mouse dongle extension. I'll explain the purpose later. Then it's my to-do list where I write three non-negotiable things that I do each day. Blue means I didn't do it. More expensive is the Steel Series mouse pad. I had it for like 10 years. Getting more expensive are the books I'm currently reading. They're pretty good if you want to learn how to make money online. I'm applying the lessons from them to the YouTube course I've been building over the last year and a half. More expensive is the Swiss Army knife. I haven't checked the price because it was a gift. Hands down, the most useful feature is this toothpick and this thing for screwing screws. More expensive are my IEMs or earbuds. I bought them after I saw this video from Optimum. My name is Optimus Prime. We are autonomous robotic organisms. Wanted to make that edit for some reason. Essentially, they're relatively cheap and have accurate audio quality. The microphone isn't the best though, but it's okay for Discord calls or in-game voice chat. More expensive is my mouse. I've tested so many mice before, and this one is so far the best for both productivity and gaming. At the bottom, you can toggle Bluetooth mode or wireless receiver mode. The DPI button will increase the DPI, the sensitivity, and the pulling rate how many times per second the mouse tells the computer where the cursor needs to go. Set it to the maximum. Bluetooth mode can only do 125 hertz pulling rate, so the mouse will always feel laggier in Bluetooth mode. But the best part are the receivers. I can use this one with my Mac without any dongles, and this one with my PC. The mouse automatically connects to whichever one was plugged in first. If I plug that one in and pull this one out of my MacBook, now the mouse is connected to my Windows PC. If I do the other way around, it will now work with the MacBook. That's why I have the extension cable on the table, so that every time I want to switch which computer my mouse mouse controls, I don't have to go under the table. More expensive is the keyboard. What I don't like is this seam here. For some reason it makes the keyboard look plastic to my brain, even though it's full aluminum. It's really heavy. wanted to make that edit as well. Same situation with the MacBook. For the longest time, I thought that the bottom was plastic because it felt like plastic, but it's just thin metal. I also thought I would only use this keyboard with a cable, but as soon as I saw how easy it was to switch between the modes, I started using the Bluetooth mode for my Mac and the cable for my PC. There's also a hidden wireless receiver that's hard to get out. It sounds so good. Let's listen with a proper microphone. Fantastic. Makes me want to type with it more, so I end up doing more work. Pressing function tab turns on white RGB, so it's pretty useful in the dark. I've used that once. The knob is nice, but annoying. It doesn't feel super premium, and when the keyboard goes to sleep, you can't wake it up with the knob. Why not? If I want to adjust volume while watching something, I have to hit a random key first so it wakes up, and then turn the knob. Why? More expensive is the microphone package. The microphone, you're listening to it right now. Boom, boom, boom. The arm, I like it, it's useful. The microphone arm is okay too. And the audio interface. This is where the microphone connects and this goes into the computer. It converts the signal from the mic to a digital signal a computer can understand and lets you adjust the sound. <laughs> almost passed out doing that. More expensive are these wireless earbuds. They were expensive four years ago when I bought them. There's a new better version now. They're very good, especially for running, because they go deep inside my ears and almost never fall out. When I plug my IEMs into my MacBook, they give off this weird electric sound, especially when the MacBook is charging. That's why I use these with the Mac. They also have great bass, I would recommend. More expensive is the monitor. I bought it for $446 three years ago. Today it's $280. I've been very happy with it. 1440p resolution and 165 hertz refresh rate. Awesome for gaming and productivity. There's now a 4K version, which I'm thinking of acquiring. More expensive is my PC. It's an absolute beast. Look at these FPS. I built it myself, which saved a lot on cost, and it was very fun to do, not gonna lie. It has these parts if you're interested. I'll leave everything linked down in the description. More expensive is the MacBook. I bought it two and a half years ago. Pretty cool laptop, I would recommend. So now that the hardware is out of the way, let's jump in and explore my workflow with this hardware, the apps I use and how I use them. Now I must say, if you're watching this, chances are you care about your productivity, which is just being able to do what you want to do in a shorter amount of time. And 
And whether you're a working professional or have your own business, what's very important to being able to unleash that productivity is being organized. I bet you're a bit like me and you love to be organized, but you rarely are. And to help you with that, I want to introduce Akiflow, this video sponsor. They've recently rolled out the rituals feature, which allows you to plan out your day and review it at the end. Down here, you can select daily planning and you'll be able to see your inbox that includes stuff from the different apps you connected to Akiflow. For example, Slack or email. And on the right, you'll be able to create tasks that you want to do for the day. I like to leave some empty space when I plan out my day to account for all the things I didn't expect to happen, but I always try to do at least one non-negotiable hour of working on YouTube videos and either meditating or learning something new. So I usually add those on the right side. Then once the day is over, you can go back and select daily shutdown, where you'll be able to review your day, seeing all the tasks you did and the stuff that you didn't do. This lets you view your entire day from a bird's eye perspective and see the areas where you did great and those that need more of your focus. If you've never seen all of your tasks from a bunch of different apps in one single place that lets you efficiently organize them, then Akiflow can help unlock this for you. Now there's this absolutely killer feature called the command bar. It's like spotlight search on macOS. I love using it to quickly create and schedule tasks within my calendar. You just put in a time, click enter and it's there. For example, if I want to create a new task in my Google calendar, I click command K to bring up the command bar, put in the vertical slash to let it know that I want to add something into my calendar, name my task, say when, and I can tell it how long I want to do that task by putting an equal sign and then saying how long, I'll do two hours. And once I click enter, that task is automatically added into my Google calendar. Very fancy. And if you're unsure what some of Akiflow's features can do, there's an exclusive one-on-one -on -one onboarding call you can take for the Akiflow team to help you get started and help you set up your Akiflow in minutes. If you want to check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. The least interesting app that I use is this one. It's called Alfred. It's essentially a search bar on macOS, which lets me search for files if I press space before doing the search. If it doesn't find what I'm looking for on my computer, it's going to take me to my browser and look for that thing, like Shrek. More interesting is my browser. I usually use Google Chrome because of all the extensions I can install into it, but unfortunately, Google Chrome doesn't let me disable this. As soon as I click into the search bar, there's a bunch of history here that I don't want to necessarily show within my videos. And the only two browsers I found that let me disable search suggestions when I'm recording are Firefox and Orion. But I haven't updated this browser for a while, so I just now use Firefox. More interesting is Affinity Photo or Photoshop. Affinity Photo is a one-time payment Photoshop alternative. Wait, how do I decrease brush size? Oh, control option. But I still haven't gotten used to it fully, and I think Photoshop does some things that are still easier to understand for my brain, especially things like clipping masks. The way it works in Affinity Photo is different and I still haven't gotten used to it. More interesting is Adobe Premiere Pro. This is the program I use for editing, as you can see. Not much to say. Here's how the current video you're watching looks like. I don't know why I said this was more interesting. More interesting is this app here called Whiskey. Also has nothing to do with my productivity. Just wanted to showcase it. It essentially lets me install install the Windows version of Steam and run this game on macOS, even though it's not available on macOS. More interesting is Visual Studio Code. This is what I used to create animations using Manim, a Python library. There it is. Oh, look at those mouse cursors appearing. I started learning how to create these animations more than a year ago, having absolutely zero knowledge of how to code. And I really like the way they spice up my videos. <sighs> Once I learned the basic stuff, like how to put rectangles on the screen, I also made a course about it for people that don't really know how to code, but still want to learn how to create some cool animations. It's really fun. I'll leave a link to the course in the description. Let's make it transform into a circle. There should be a rectangle and there should be a circle. Doesn't that just look nice? Also in VS Code, I use the Vim extension, which lets me navigate my code with the keyboard instead of my mouse. It's quite scary and complicated in the beginning, but I'm slowly learning and improving how to do this. More interesting is Obsidian. It's a note-taking app that essentially saves all of the raw note files on your computer because all of the notes are in Markdown. So essentially it only formats things with symbols that any text editor can understand, which means I can find my note files on my computer. Obsidian notes, there they are, the same category 
categories is here. I organize my notes using the para method, projects, areas, resources, and archive. Archive essentially has a bunch of things that I don't need anymore. Areas has long-term things that I manage over time. So this, for example, is a learn something new note where every time I learn something, I just put it in there. For instance, I mentioned that I'm using Vim and inside the learn something new note, I have a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that Vim uses. It's the thing that I use in VS Code as well as Obsidian to navigate between text without having to use my mouse cursor. Very useful. Anyway, all of the notes are here inside of my computer. And if I want to find the same note, the learn something new note, I can just open it with something like text edit or notepad. And here are the same Vim notes in this nice text format. So if I want to change my note taking app, I don't have to use Obsidian. I can just transfer my notes to something else. Also, it has a bunch of cool plugins that you can install if you need them. For example, the advanced slides plugin, which lets you create slides. I used the slides plugin for my one hour YouTuber course, link in the description. And essentially I would just create the slides and then use a script that I found somewhere online that lets me export the slides to PNG images, which I can then import into Premiere Pro and edit the course lessons for the YouTube course. I can also organize my notes within folders like this. Oh, this has to be here. The other half of my notes are still inside of Apple Notes. I don't know how my brain categorizes everything, but some notes go inside of Apple Notes and some go into Obsidian because I don't have Obsidian on my phone. So if I'm taking notes on the go, I usually use the Apple Notes app. More interesting is Carabiner Elements. This app lets you remap keys for your keyboard and mouse. For instance, I have a simple modification here that remaps caps lock to escape. This is very useful when I'm using Vim mode inside of Obsidian or Visual Studio Code to navigate text because Vim has different modes. For example, right now I'm in insert mode and I can type something, but if I want to escape out of it, I have to click escape. And it's much easier to reach the caps lock key, which is useless either way to hit escape rather than to reach escape on my keyboard. By the way, I just got a new keyboard. I already showed the keyboard, never mind. <laughs> there are also more complex modifications. For example, I like this one a lot. Change the right command key plus H, J, K, L keys to arrow keys. Inside of Vim, the thing that I mentioned before to navigate text, you can use the H, J, K, and L keys to move left, down, up, and right. But this doesn't exist anywhere but inside of Vim. So what if I want to use the same navigation within my browser? If I mistype something and I want to navigate back, I have to use my arrow keys. But this modification here allows me to hit the right command key with my right thumb and then use the H, J, K, and L keys to navigate. I don't have to move my hand anywhere else from the home row, from the center of the keyboard, and I can just continue typing. I still haven't completely gotten used to this, and my brain sometimes breaks when I'm using this keyboard shortcut, but I'm slowly getting faster and faster. More interesting is Mousecape. This is not really a productivity app, although sometimes it strangely increases my productivity and it lets you change the mouse cursor on macOS. For example, here I have the breeze cursor, the actual, actual, actual one, because there are a bunch of imposters here and I frequently like changing my mouse cursor. Now, I'm not sure if this cursor is now visible inside of my screen recording software, but every time that I get bored of the default cursor, I can just come here and pick another one. For example, the Linux default cursor, or maybe I want to spice things up with the white cursor. Looks like I'm using Linux now, macOS going back to its roots. Unfortunately, not many people know about this app or are creating cursors for it, so there aren't that many available online, which means that sometimes I need to improvise and make my own, or actually steal my own if I really want them. Okay, now I need to change it back. More interesting is an app called Better Display. This is essentially a utility that lives here in the menu bar and what it lets you do is fantastic because macOS doesn't really like most monitors that are out there. You're either stuck with having to buy a 4K or 5K monitor, which are expensive, or risk your display looking like this. Ooh, look at this mouse cursor or how blurry this text is here. But this app fixes this issue and essentially lets you use a nice looking resolution with your display if you're using macOS without making everything look really bad on the screen. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it's awesome. Shall we move on to Windows? On Windows, the least interesting app that I use is called Power Toys. It essentially adds a bunch of useful features into Windows and you can disable and enable each one depending if you need them. For example, I can click Alt Space and it brings up a similar search interface, just like the Alfred app on macOS, where I can search for different settings like mouse 
Windows settings, for instance, nice dark mode on Windows. Or if I type in things that don't exist on my computer, I have the option to also search the web. That's just one of the features. I have the find my mouse feature that I almost never use. I should be using it more for screen recordings. And I frequently use the color picker, Windows Shift C, which lets you pick a color from anywhere. And then it copies the hex code of that color into my clipboard. Very nice. More interesting is OBS. It's an app that lets you do screen recordings. It's quite confusing at first because there are a bunch of settings. And if you don't have a nice processor or a graphics card, you're probably going to get horrible quality out of this thing. But these are the settings that I use for screen recordings. This app also tends to crash. And just recently, I figured out that I can use the MKV format, which Adobe Premiere Pro doesn't actually accept. But if OBS crashes, I can recover this format. And once it records in this format, I can go here, file and remux recordings. And essentially, it turns all of the MKV recordings into MP4 recordings, which Premiere does accept. So that's a new unlock for me. More interesting is ShareX. This is a very good app for taking screenshots. Ooh, why is everything so small? Essentially, I can just boink, take a screenshot. It also captures my mouse cursor there. The cursor doesn't look super nice, but it has a bunch of other features, which most of the features I don't really use. I just use the full screen screenshot tool or the area select screenshot tool, mainly because it lets me pick custom keyboard shortcuts that I want to use for capturing the screen. I decided to use the same ones that I use on macOS, so I don't have to rewire my brain every time I want to take a screenshot. More interesting is auto hotkey. I haven't even scratched the surface of what this app can do. I don't even seem to know how to open it. There we go. And it essentially lets you write custom scripts. Now I have very little clue as to how to write these scripts, so I either use AI or take two hours to write something simple like this, but it's very useful once you get it all set up. For example, here, if it detects that I have Visual Studio Code open, it will essentially remap my escape key to the backwards slash. And I have my caps lock key set to the backwards slash. I know, weird choice. So essentially, if I have Visual Studio Code open and I'm writing something with Vim, I can hit caps lock and it's going to say escape. But if I hit caps lock in some other app, it's just going to put in a backwards slash. Very useful. Down here, I have something similar to what I had in Carabiner Elements on macOS. It lets me press the right alt key and H, J, K, L keys to move my cursor between texts. So here I can go left and right. I can also jump between the entire line or hold shift to select words all while not touching my arrow keys, which is very nice. It doesn't always work, especially if any other modifier keys get thrown into the mix, but it works for the most part. Beautiful. Oh, and there's one more thing I totally forgot to mention. Psych.